Hey folks, this is Justin from Metcalf Mills. I wanted to tell you about sorghum cane. Now this variety that we grow is called sugar drip. A lot of times it'll be mistaken for corn if somebody's driving by and they see this stuff growing. It's a big grass plant like corn. There's three types of sorghum. There's grain sorghum, which is grown just for the grain. And there's the sweet type of sorghum. There's a lot of varieties of that. And this all originated from Africa. And the third type of sorghum is the broom corn variety. And it's grown for the head, which makes a type of straw that is used for tying brooms in the olden days. Now my family has been growing sorghum in this area. I don't know exactly how long. I don't know exactly when it got here but my family's been here almost 200 years and from what i can tell the sugar drip is the variety that my family grew years back uh, this particular seed stock came from a good friend of mine chelsea askew and she's grown this variety for a few years it's a great uh, type of sorghum cane it makes a wonderful syrup uh, it's funny the di if just different fields that you grow it in differences in the soil will make a different type of syrup like this stuff likes a sandy ground so we have some uh, acreage down close to the creek that we grow that's more sandy and when you grow the cane in that ground it'll be It'll be more light in color. It'll be really clear and just beautiful syrup. And you, and if you grow it in, say, a richer, darker ground, then the syrup will be darker. A lot of people around here in the mountains, they tried to grow their sorghum cane on cl their clay ground, where they had more of a clay-type soil. And it likes that pretty well. I guess it's it's better drained, and it's not as rich, and it just... It makes a better syrup. I have some sugar drip sorghum seed that was passed down to me by an old timer in the community here where I live. And I think that it may have came from one of my grandpa's brother's seed stock. I'm gonna try to grow some of that next year and see how it does. Uh, my, my grandpa raised uh, sorghum cane. My dad didn't. It kind of. My dad and my grandpa kind of got sick about the same time, and the farming and all that kind of stuff kind of stopped. And at the time, I was just a young pup. I didn't wasn't big enough to do anything with anything like that. So I've had to gather up and and kind of restart a lot of things and. Uh, the sorghum is one of them. I've helped other people throughout my life at different times working in sorghum and processing and doing all that stuff. And just so you know, you don't have to have a farming background to grow some stuff, to grow sorghum or to grow some food. You don't have to have a farming background to do that. All you gotta have is some dirt. And sometimes you can get that from, if you don't have it yourself, I mean, a neighbor, if you got a lot of grass to mow, you can turn that stuff upside down and plant some seeds. You can grow some food. Just, just want you to know that if you have any interest in it. Like I was saying, my family's been growing sorghum for years and years, and uh, it's always been a big part of, it's a sugar crop. You know, it was sweetener back in the days when you just couldn't go to the store and buy sugar, which... Of course, it, I think this is a lot better for you than just plain old sugar is anyway. And a lot of times, like, people called sorghum cane molasses all my life. But, you know, molasses are here in the mountains. They say lasses, just lasses. And that's not really accurate. M molasses is a byproduct from sugar cane. Sorghum is a different, a different type of plant. <laughs> you know, that makes a syrup versus it's cooked down for the sugar content only.
to grow sorghum, it's pretty much just like any other plant, corn, things like that. You know, the seeds are planted in a straight row normally. About eight inches apart, you can plant it thicker, and then when it's two or three, four inches tall, you thin it out to the spacing you want. But about eight inches seems to be good. Some of this in this particular patch is a little closer, and the ground's real rich here, so maybe that'll help balance out the richness it being thicker, I don't know. It's it's new ground here, so we'll find out. But to take care of this crop, when it gets big enough, I just come through and cultivate to clean all the weeds out of it and up. And I use the cultivate maybe three times. Then it gets pretty much too big to cultivate. It'll grow up, get tall, and then it'll start making a head and it'll be a big seed head that comes out on top. And when it starts getting ripe, uh, there'll be, usually you get something that's new for the past few years, it's a sugar cane aphid that comes in and gets on your sugar cane, and if you don't manage that pest, it'll manage you. I mean, it can ruin your sugar cane crop. But what I do with that, since I try to grow pretty much everything I do as close to organically grown as I possibly can, I don't use any chemicals of any kind on sorghum. What I use is neem oil, and it's derived from the neem tree. How I apply that is, in the past I've made a fogger from a backpack blower and a one gallon garden sprayer. And I just hook the garden sprayer into the pipe on the backpack blower. And I put in like a 22 and a half degree elbow on the bottom of the blower pipe so that it would give it a little uplift. And I just walk through and just mist and fog up underneath the leaves where those aphids live. Uh, we've went through by hand and just smushed them, but that's very time consuming, but it, it works really good if you don't have a huge crop. This year, I'm going to try something new as far as applying the neem. I'm working on a wagon that's going to have the blower and the sprayer on the wagon, and you just pretty much walk through and pull the wagon, and it will fog on both sides of the row up underneath like you need it to almost kind of straight up and not with too much force just enough to get that mist up into the plant really well that'll be something that you'll see on a future video and we check this sugar content with a refractometer when the seed head starts getting ripe and you want to start checking that you know every few days to see when that sugar content is getting right because you want to cook at the as close to the perfect time as you can and, and that'll be something you'll see in a future video as well another way to tell is the seed head it will start some of the seeds will be further along and you'll have like on the bottom of the seed head they'll get they'll start getting pretty hard and then in the middle it'll be like a soft dough and then up top it'll still be pretty juicy that's a good time when a good indicator of when the sugar content is getting right uh then we come through by hand and strip all the fodder off the plants so this is going to be it's about as tall about as high as i can reach to get up there strip all the fodder off of a plant all the way down to the ground so that you just have just a stalk there nothing else and you can either cut the seed heads off at that time or after you chop down the stalk put it on the truck or trailer then you can clip seed heads whenever however works best for you we usually cut them off after they go on the truck or trailer. Once we haul the cane in, we have a cane mill that we will run this cane through and it will press and crush those stalks and we'll get all the juice out of those stalks 
it gets filtered about three times before it goes into the pan on the furnace. We have a wood-fired furnace that we cook it with. And this will all be coming up in future videos so you can see this whole process. And that's a good cue for a reminder. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Like this video if you will. I'd appreciate it. And I look forward to sharing what I'm doing with you. I hope you enjoy it. And I look forward to seeing you next time. This is Justin at Metcalf Mills.